Everything looks good? Okay, so you're joining me for a live draw along where we're going to, well, where I'm going to show you how to draw a manta ray. Um, hopefully, it should look like this. By the time we're done, all you need is a pen and paper. Um, I'm going to take you through it using simple shapes, so hopefully everyone at home can draw along and it'll be easy peasy. Uh, great, so I expect it's going to take about 30 minutes uh, to complete this drawing. Um, it's going to be in two parts and to begin with I'm going to draw with you an outline of the ray and then we're going to render it. Okay, so thank you so much for joining and without further ado I'm just going to point the camera at the paper now. So excuse the motion. Okay, let me sort out my camera one moment. Flip it around so you can see correctly. <laughs> I flip it this way now, that might be a little nicer, yep. Okay, what have we got here then? So, here's the line drawing that we're going to be following. Um, if everybody's got their pen and paper at the ready, we can crack on. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to start off by drawing this ellipse in the center of the manta ray here. I'm going to focus most of the drawing around that ellipse. What we're going to do is draw it relatively wide and relatively shallow. The next important part is to make sure that on the uh, farthest left and right, we draw um, a little right angle. Uh, we're going to be drawing them here. So relatively far over, don't draw it in the like, kind of middle area because they do want to be on the extremities of the ellipse. Two little right angles. And from those right angles, we're going to draw some right angle triangles. These areas here, which form the pectoral fins of the manta ray. Um, make sure when you draw these triangles, you can draw a vertical line down, that it's about twice as deep as the ellipse that you've drawn, approximately, um, and about as long. So if I draw a crossways, like so. And again, sorry, trying not to cast a shadow over the drawing. Like so. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is at the bottom of these triangles, we're going to draw an arc. So that's the top of his mouth here. So you can see it's a relatively shallow arc. And that's the top of his mouth. Then we're going to draw what are called these cephalic lobes, kind of prongs, these appendages that come out the front of the manta ray's mouth. So the way I like to describe drawing these is as though you're drawing very short angled, ankled socks. So draw little, two little short parallel lines and from those parallel lines, draw a long foot shape. As if you're drawing a very long footed sock. <laughs> and do the same on the other side, but be sure not to intersect your um, socks together. So another long sock, like so. Lovely. Next up, we're going to draw the uh, underside of the mouth. Um, so an upwards face and a pointing arc from the bottom of the innermost parallel line. Just draw an upward curving line. Then we're going to draw the eyes. So the eyes are here nestled between the sock and uh, the triangle, the bottom of the triangle near the hypotenuse. Just draw a, a circle there and a circle on the other side too. Now within the circle, what I'd like you to draw is two more circles that are stacked one on top of the other. So if we do that now, one, two. And again on the other side, Okay, so next up, 
we're going to add some um, of the extensions, oopsie daisy, some of the extens extensions to the wings. So you can see on the left hand triangle there on the pectoral fin, um, there's a what amounts to essentially a C shape that looks a lot like that. So from the top of the triangle, we're going to uh, find a point about a quarter of the way down um, or less, or a fifth of the way down maybe, of the um, hypotenuse of that triangle and draw this C shape. So just like so. On the right hand wing, we're going to give it a flick as you can see here. So um, from this point, you just wanna create this sort of shape. So it's like up here and then following the hypotenuse of the right hand triangle, we go up to meet it, tapering out, tapering in, I should say. <clears throat> Okay, so next up, hopefully you can see that your manta ray is taking shape. Um, we're just going to add the dorsal fin on the back. So what we're going to do is from these two right angled points that you made to begin with, we're going to draw what might look a little bit like a shallow volcano. Okay, so don't make it too pointy. We want to do this shape here. So a gradual up, then a gradual down again. Um, draw a parallel line on the left hand side of that volcano underneath the one you've just drawn like this. Um, and then in the back, like as if it's in the background that there's another volcano. Um, so we want to draw a similar sort of shape. So again, you draw it up, not too high, and then back down again. Right. Next up, what should we do? Um, I think we'll add these parallel lines along the left hand and the right hand pectoral fin. So starting from the right hand side, um, pick a point on the eye and curve a line towards the hypotenuse of the triangle and then run it in parallel and again so that it tapers to join the point at the end of the wing. We'll connect it from the eye to this cephalic lobe, um, just with a, a small line there. On the left hand side, we want to pick a, a point on the C shape that you made um, and draw a curved line that will um, become uh, that will become parallel to the hypotenuse of the left triangle. So if we do that, we can curve it there and then follow the hypotenuse down to the eye. And like we did on the right-hand eye, we just want to connect that eye to the cephalic lobe, with a small little line here. Okay, right, next up, I think we should draw the shapes on the inside of the mouth these uh, gills here. So we draw uh, half an oval shape and then uh, moving down towards uh, the bottom uh, line of the mouth, we want to draw some uh, long carrot shapes. The, the, the shapes want to be just about as long as each other. So if I show you first, so we're drawing one line out and then again, the next line will come to meet approximately the same distance as the first one we drew, the first carrot shape we drew. And we'll do it again on this side too. So one line and the other one is about as long as the first one you drew. Okay, brilliant. I hope you're following so far. And um, we have a couple of things left to do. I think what we'll draw next is this wavy line that forms the patches on the back of the manta ray. So I'll draw the shape out first. So can you see this shape here where you've got the uh, upwards arc or the downwards arc, and then it kind of looks like a square for the rest of the shape. So it looks a little bit like this on your manta ray. Can you see that shape? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to draw what might look a little bit like the silhouette of a head and neck. So that's the head and this is the neck. So if this is the hypotenuse of the triangle, 
starting from the hypotenuse, um, and I'll just watch this for a moment and then I'll guide you through it in a second. Starting from the hypotenuse, you draw the neck and the head wants to kind of take up uh, more of the space inside the square there. Um, doesn't matter if you go strange with your head because these, are, these aren't heads, these are patches on the back of the man's face, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then um, keep in parallel with the mouth, draw another little bump at the midway point. Um, and then as you approach the other triangle, curve back around and draw another head and neck shape, bulbous shape. And then you would meet the hypotenuse on the other side. Okay, so that's essentially what we're trying to do. So we can, you can follow the template that I've drawn up here and follow me now. So pick a point on the left-hand hypotenuse, the innermost left-hand hypotenuse, and then draw a curved line out so that it reaches into the middle square and draw a head and neck shape. Curve it back again. Make sure that you keep distance from the mouth here. Make it a middle, um, smaller bump in the middle. Carry on, curve it back round again. Create another bulbous shape. Back down to a neck and then taper it out to meet the hypotenuse of the right hand triangle. I hope you followed that. I hope I described it adequately. Um, so we're almost there now. Uh, let's just add some more patches on the manta ray, basically some circles. Uh, make them large enough to, so that later on we can draw a smiley face inside them. So, you know, two dots and a little smile. That's what we're doing later on. So just add some circles along the back of the manta ray there. I've got three on each triangle and one in the middle, but you can add as many circles or as little circles as you prefer. Finally, uh, the last piece of this line drawing is to draw the tail. You can see it's got a nice, beautiful, long ar arcing tail that goes up to a light bulb. But for now, we're just going to draw a long arc up to a teeny tiny little ellipse. So congratulations, that's the first part of the drawing. Um, I hope you feel like it's gone well so far. Um, we are going to render it now. So don't worry, it should be nice and straightforward. I've planned it out for you, so all you have to do is follow my instructions. So here we go. This is what we're aiming for now. So the first thing you want to do is you want to draw these sorts of swirls. So this is, I, I quite like this pattern. Uh, it's just loop upon loop upon loop upon loop in a nice wobbly line. And we're going to follow um, the hypotenuse, the innermost line of this triangle, and around those bulbous heads that you just drew, around the middle bump, all the way back round again, the second head, and up the uh, right-hand hypotenuse. Uh, similar to this, so if this is the left-hand hypotenuse, I follow it. I don't go over the line, the parallel line that you drew. Um, around, I'm just doing it quickly for now, but I'll do it properly in a second, around like this, and then up the other side. Okay, so let's do it carefully now. So starting from um, the furthest point that you can on the left wing, but also keeping a nice white line on the edge, uh, you want to draw little swirls. And carefully now, this time, we want to follow the innermost line and then up on the kind of bulbous head silhouettes that we drew earlier and follow that wavy line all the way around and follow it carefully into the crevice here, then back out again over this little bump into the other crevice, back around again over the second head shape. Back down and then curve back up again, following the hypotenuse on the right hand triangle all the way to the top. Great, so that's the first part. Now we're going to shade. Um, we're going to shade this 
dark as we can go, as black as we can go. So really scribble and, and make your marks as dense as possible. Um, it will look much better than if you do it like that. So the closer your lines are together, the darker it should look. Um, if you're using a pen, if you're using a pencil, you might need to press a little harder as well. Okay, so the, we're gonna start off with this volcano shape um, at the back of the manta ray. And we're gonna color it in black. And don't go over any of the lines, just fill in that mountain shape. Then you can see on this drawing at the top here, there's a white line. And that's because I've left it, the paper exposed. <clears throat> so you, um, where we've created a parallel line here, you just want to shade underneath it. And what we're doing now is just making sure that we don't go over these lines as we shade the entire back of the manta ray. Okay, that should be enough. Then from the left hand wing, without obscuring, so you might want to draw a little line separating out your swirls um, from the rest of the wing. And then, or you don't have to, but um, it might help. You want to shade without obscuring those beautiful little swirls that you made earlier. As you approach the circles on the wing, just shade around them so that you don't uh, disrupt the shapes accidentally. Uh, so I'm just gonna shade around this circle. Make sure you don't obscure any of the swirls as you come back up again. And then sh shade around the third circle there. Continue shading the rest of the triangle. It takes a bit of time, but to get it black, it's worth it. Creates a nice contrast then. And your manta ray should stand out, should stand out more. Okay, again, continue to shade in this area and depending on how you've um, drawn your bulbous head shapes, um, you might have to shade into the crevices if there's any white space you want to shade in those areas. So for example, here, if this was left white because I hadn't swirled in that area, you just want to blank, black it off a little bit like so. But um, it's already pretty black on uh, mine, it's covered in marks, so I'm not going to do it too much. All right. Shade around the circle here. And if you want to uh, review this video later, if you wanted to show a friend or do it again, um, it'll be on my Facebook page so you can follow the instructions all over again, or you can find it on my YouTube channel interested in doodling a little bit at a later date. Okay, then we're on to the right hand triangle. So carry on following the line of swirls that you've created. around the circles, oopsie, a bit reckless there. And if you're like me, you might start to get a bit of hand cramp at this point. <laughs> um, Third circle, we're almost there now. This takes the longest amount of time. After this, it's plain sailing. Uh, 
Okay, and then just finish off your right hand triangle. Shade, 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 shade. And there you have it, you've shaded the back of your manta ray. Next up, we are going to shade the inside of the mouth. Uh, so in these kind of, in this half circle that we drew earlier and in these kind of half oval shaped carrot shapes, we're gonna tone them all black, just like in here. Um, make sure you don't go over the lines, just inside the half circle. and inside the carrot shapes here. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so you've done the inside of the mouth. Now we're going to follow these white lines with some little dots. So just make a dot along the white lines. Helps give the inside of his mouth a bit of texture. Um, and we are going to add some more dots on his patches, his big white patches that we've tried so hard to illustrate on his back here. So. Draw little circles that are transparent and opaque. Just a little, a mixture of both is quite nice. And again, I'm gonna follow the top lip. And into the second patch. Like so. Great, okay, so the next bit we're going to shade in the eyes. You can see on this manta ray that his eyes are black, um, but the circles that we stacked earlier within, within the eye are white. So what I want you to do is carefully shade around those two inner circles. So that's what we're doing. I did it larger here so it's easier for you to see, um, but that's what I'm doing now. So I'm being very careful not to obscure those two inner circles. I want to keep those white. Like so. Only a couple of things left to do now. Um, one line that I need to add in is if you draw a line from the um, innermost parallel sock line that we did, the, the ankle part of the sock, and you join it up to the foot part of the sock, just like that, so, like that. And then along this cephalic lobe, we're going to draw some dashed lines. You don't want to draw them too close together because we want it to look um, quite light. So just drawing some small dashed lines, peter them out at the end. So small dashed lines, and then you can peter it out at the end. We're going to do the same thing up here. Um, you can see on the underside of the wing. So just some small dashed lines on the underside of the wing. Um, next up, to finish the back, we're going to finish by adding uh, lots of smiley faces into these circles. So everyone knows how to draw a smiley face, dot, dot, line. That one's quite small for me. Whoop. If you've drawn your circles uh, too small, you might find this a bit more difficult. And finally, as you can see on my manta ray here, on the back, on the end of his tail, he's got a, a cute little light bulb. So earlier I asked you to draw an oval shape, and on that oval shape we're going to do two dashed lines, and then from the oval, we're going to curve it out in a nice large circle um, and do two little swirls within it. Then around it, just do some dashes. And that kind of symbolizes a light bulb quite nicely, I think. So two dashed lines here. And then 
a bulb, swirl, and make it look like it's illuminated. And that's it. You've drawn your you've you've drawn yourself a manta ray. Congratulations. I hope you really enjoyed um, the process and thank you so much for joining me. Um, I would love, love, love to see your creations. So please um, I, send me a message with a photo of what you've drawn um, or just tag me on Facebook. Hopefully I'll see it. Uh, it's better if you send me a message. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to see what you've made. Um, as I said before, um, please have a look on my um, Facebook page if you wanted to repeat the exercise or maybe on YouTube as well. And if you know a friend that might love manta rays and wants to learn how to draw a manta ray using simple shapes, then uh, direct them to this video tutorial and hopefully they'll like it too. Thank you again for joining me and um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Bye!